All right, guys, so what we're going to do today is we're going to be creating a sort of main menu in Adobe Photoshop that can be exported out into a games engine. Um, the games engine we're going to look at specifically is Unreal Engine, but it could be for any games engine. And um, yeah, so we'll look at creating it, how we can set it up uh, with the layers and how we can then export it in all in one click. So it creates all the assets for us that we can then uh, use in the games engine. So all I've done really here so far is uh, open up Photoshop uh, and hit create new. What you'll see then, you might see that the size of the document here is set up with pit, uh, centimeters. We don't want that, uh, you know, that's mainly if you're going to be setting up something to print. We want to change it to pixels and I'm just going to work with full HD. You might be want to, wanting to create something for 4K, for example, but um, you know, we're going to stick with H, full HD for now. So it's 1920 uh, by 1080. Okay, and um, I think really that will be fine. Otherwise, the rest you can just leave as its default. Orientation, again, landscape is what we want. We don't need to use our boards. So let's hit create. You'll get your blank canvas here. Uh, background is locked by default. So you just click it once to unlock it. I actually have just a an image that I've got, which I've got to use as my main background. Obviously, you could. This isn't a tutorial about creating your own background images and stuff like that. So this is just about setting up everything uh, to create it as a main menu. So I'm just going to um, import. Uh, let's open that. Uh, this one. Okay. Uh, this is already. I, I know that the resolution of this is the same. I could have just opened it and started with that, really. But I'll drag that in uh, to this one get rid of that okay so I've brought in uh, what will be my background layer notice that when you if you do it uh, open up and bring over an image like that it does create it as another layer so I no longer need this layer zero so I'm going to right click and delete that layer all right so we have one layer as our background image and next thing we're going to want is a couple of buttons so we're going to again keep it fairly simple and I'm just going to use the rectangle tool, draw out the size of the button that I want. Don't worry about positioning for now. Uh, and I'm going to then just get my move tool and move it. I want to kind of have my buttons down here, I think. I'm just going to have a couple of buttons. But again, you know, you could have, add as many buttons as you feel you need for your menu. So somewhere around there is fine. Uh, I'll just create one first, obviously, and then I can duplicate it for any other buttons that I might need to do. So up here, uh, when you have your layer selected, see it's rectangle here, I can go to fill. And over here, you've got your color swatch here. So this will bring it up. What's good about, um, about this is you can then just hover over your background image and you get your pipette tool automatically. So you can just kind of select colors this is what i like to do anyway from the background image that you could use for your buttons because then it kind of you, you, the color scheme stays sort of connected if you know what i mean so for example i might want my buttons to be this kind of bright color that is used in this tree here so if i push ok there you can see that color it kind of matches and it, it fits in with the background you might want a completely separate color but again completely up to you i just think it's a nice feature to have that pipette tool there to pick up any colors you might want from the background image uh, you could change the stroke which is the background or the outline color if you wanted to um wasn't really going to do that but i could try maybe like that sky color no don't like that probably needs to be something much darker something like that maybe that'll do okay um, and just some sort of basic edits you could do. I mean, you could have the button just like that if you really wanted to, um, but we're going to right click it and I'm going to go to the blending options. So again, some common ones that you might want to use, don't have to use all of these, but just play around with it basically to what you want to do. So you might want this bevel and emboss. You can see already that looks uh, sort of a bit more three dimensional. If you want to go down that route, you could adjust some of the settings like the size there. You might want it at a bit more of an angle. 
something like that perhaps. You can change the color of that highlight. You might want to go for some perhaps inner glow. Again, this looks like it's very large. So turn that size down. Turn the opacity down maybe. It's, this is going to be personal preference. You can change the color here. Again, you can pick up on the pipette tool um, to pick up colors from the background image. Always seems to work well. Um, should we do any others? That probably is fine. You can do, look at things like in a shadow, uh, outer glow, drop shadow. Uh, perhaps drop shadow might work quite well actually. It makes it stand out a bit nicely there straight away. Um, so that's fine. Again, just some sort of some of the settings you can have a look at. Um, I also like to make the buttons a bit uh, transparent. So I'm going to drop the opacity down to maybe uh, 80%, around 80%. There we are. Okay, so there's a button. Um, looks absolutely fine. Now, when you're happy with it, you can just right click it. And what I just do is duplicate the layer and it creates another one. And then you can just move it down and you can see the guides keep it all in sort of in line with each other. And you can have a second button there. And you can move them around as, as and when you need to. Okay, so there's the buttons themselves. And notice already that I've got them as separate layers. That's really important. That's the most important thing about this setup is the layers. So I've got a layer for my background, a layer for that button there, and a layer for that button there. You can rename them if you want to keep them uh, more organized. Uh, double click it to rename it. Okay, so now we want to look at some text. So I'm going to get the text uh, icon here. Uh, maybe I want some text over my button, so just click there. Uh, that's really big. Just change it to any old random font for now and turn that right down the size. Okay, if you position that into the middle, notice that as you move it around, it should snap to the middle. Um, change the sizing as, as you like and the font as well. I'm not going to worry much about the font here just yet. So I'm going to create another text layer around here and that's going to be quit. Notice that it will pick up on the last settings you use for text as well. Put that in the middle. Okay, so I've got like a start and quit button. Again, if you want more buttons, just add them in the same way. Um, so first things first here, what we're going to, what's going to happen when we export that this is going to export each layer as an, as a separate image. And we want the text to be part of the button. So once you're finished, finished editing your text, you need to sort of merge these layers so that, that they are just one layer. All right. So I need to finish my text off. So perhaps I'll just do a little bit more editing, reselect that. What I want to do, let's look at the blending options. I might put a stroke around it, not quite like that. <laughs> Turn that right down. Just so that again, it helps the text stand out. And I'm going to change the font, something that fits in a bit better. I think I had one before, um, maybe this scripty one. something like that. We can also, if you really want to um, manually position something, if you use the arrow keys on the keyboard, uh, you can sort of move it around, you know, really precisely. And I'm going to do the same thing for the quit text. Change it to that script, change the size and the blending options add on the stroke and again it's remembered what I did last. This is helpful. Move that into position. Okay. Happy with that. So yeah once you're happy with the text and the button itself you can so which one's which <laughs> I change the order so that they match up. So I've got this one that's the start and that's the start. So if you hold control and select both of those two layers, the text and the icon, right click it and 
we should find where have we gone? Does this one emerge? Why am I not seeing that? Ah, oh, okay. It is there. I don't know why. I had that. Okay, bear with me a minute. Right, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't seeing what I wanted there. Um, but yeah, so just select and then hold control, select both of the layers, right click them, um, and again it's gone. <laughs> Let's try again. What am I doing wrong here? It's literally, it will just say merge layers. That one and that one. Okay, now it says merge layers. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. Click merge layers and it will merge it into one thing. Okay, let's try it again with the other one. So click that layer and that layer. Right click. Again, no merge layers. Hopefully yours doesn't do this. Is it just the way I'm, where I'm clicking? Never had this problem before. Oh, now it says merge layers. Okay, so we've got a, a start layer, a quit layer, and my background layer. Last thing I'm going to add is um, just another bit of text for like a, a title for the game. It's going to be up here somewhere. Um, this game is going to be called Looking at Trees, the game. <laughs> I'm sure you can think of something better for yours. Okay, let's up that size of the text that's too big something like that might be fine um in cases like this this is where we need to add the kind of stroke to the text because it kind of blends in with the background too much so you just can't read it very well so if we go to our blending options on that layer add the stroke move this out of the way a bit and then you can see it becomes more visible up to about three about four no, three. Okay, and you can play around with blending options again, do whatever you like. Okay? I mean, it's not the most amazing logo, I'm sure. Again, you can do more, but it's more about the, um, the setting up and the exporting uh, for us here. So I've got everything I want. I've got my layer for a logo, layer for two buttons, and the background layer. That's all sorted. So all we need to do now once you're happy with it, is you go to File, Export, and Layers to Files. So hit that. We need a destination to save it to. So um, for me, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. Uh, make a new folder for it, maybe. Menu Assets. Put it in there. Uh, the prefix, so that's like the name of the um, files. So um, Menu. It's got the menu is fine. File type, this is really important. Don't make it a JPEG because you know we added the transparency onto here. We need to keep that transparency. And also you need the transparency in order for it to work um, by sort of trimming down the layers and things like that. Um, which you don't get the option with JPEG. So you need PNG24. Make sure you tick transparency and you tick trim tick trim layers. Uh, and you hit run. We need to kind of just leave it for a bit uh, to do its thing as it exports each of those layers individually. You can kind of see it happening. And then you'll get um, a notification saying it was successful. So if I just uh, go back to my desktop, I see I've got the unfolder menu assets. And then in there, I've got these individual images. So I've got that for my logo. I've got this button. I've got this button. And I've got 
the background, all those individual images. So now when I open up Unreal Engine or my games engine, I can import these individually to build the menu within the engine, which is for another video. All right, so that's the setup. And yeah, once you've got that, you're ready to go.